Embarking on a journey back to the 4th century AD, we find ourselves in the era of Roman Emperor Diocletian, an era that was marked by its unique blend of political intrigue and architectural prowess. Diocletian, unlike his predecessors, made a surprising decision to retire in the year 305 AD. This decision sparked the need for a grand and fortified palace, a place where he could spend his retirement years in tranquility and security. The architectural style of this period, characterized by its robust fortifications and ornate detailing, played a significant role in shaping the design of this palace. The palace was envisioned to be not just a residence, but a stronghold that mirrored the strength and grandeur of the emperor himself. It was to be a structure that stood as a testament to Diocletian's reign and the architectural brilliance of the time. Thus, the stage was set for the construction of what would become one of the most impressive architectural feats of the era, the Palace of Diocletian. Now, let us delve into the heart of the matter the construction of this magnificent palace. The construction of the Palace of Diocletian was a colossal undertaking involving meticulous planning, an abundance of resources and a vast workforce. The palace was conceived as a fortress for the Emperor's retirement, but it was no ordinary stronghold. It was a self-sufficient metropolis, a city within a city embodying both defensive and residential aspects. The planning stage was marked by a deep understanding of the terrain and the strategic placement of the palace. It was positioned to take advantage of the natural protection offered by the sea and the hills, while its walls and towers were designed to deter any terrestrial threats. The logistics of the construction were nothing short of impressive. The materials used were sourced from different parts of the Roman Empire. White limestone from the island of Brac, marble from Greece and Italy, and imported granite columns and sphinxes from Egypt. The transportation and assembly of these materials required a highly organized and efficient logistical system. A vast labor force, consisting of soldiers, slaves and local inhabitants, toiled for around 10 years to bring the Emperor's vision to life. They built not only the palace, but also an entire infrastructure, including aqueducts, sewage systems and roads. The layout of the palace was both practical and luxurious. It housed military barracks, temples, administrative buildings and luxurious villines with sea views. Its self-sufficient nature meant that it could function independently, with its own water supply and food production. Among its unique features were the substructures, designed to elevate the emperor's apartments and provide storage and service areas. The mausoleum, now the Cathedral of St. Domnius, was another architectural marvel, with its intricate carvings and octagonal shape. The construction of the Palace of Diocletian was no less than an architectural marvel of its time. It was a testament to the architectural prowess of the Romans and the grand vision of Emperor Diocletian. This palace city stands as a symbol of the past, reminding us of the grandeur and complexity of ancient civilizations. Fast forward to centuries later, the Grand Palace was rediscovered and given a new lease of life. A treasure lost in time, the Palace of Diocletian was unearthed in the early 17th century by the renowned archaeologist Robert Adam. The discovery stirred the world, revealing a marvel that had been buried under the sands of time. Initial reactions were of awe and admiration for Roman ingenuity and architectural prowess. Over the years, the palace has undergone numerous restoration works to preserve its original grandeur. Each stone was treated with the utmost care, each fresco delicately restored. The process was meticulous, painstaking, yet worth every effort. The palace, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is a living testament to the architectural brilliance of the Romans. Today, the Palace of Diocletian stands not just as a testament to Roman architecture, but also as a symbol of historical endurance and cultural preservation. So, what makes the Palace of Diocletian so special? Well, we've journeyed through the historical context. Marvelling at the era that shaped its creation, we've explored the grandeur of its construction with its unique architectural features that still stand strong today. Indeed, the Palace of Diocletian is not just a building, it's a testament to the ingenuity and vision of its creators. We've also delved into its discovery and preservation, understanding how it was brought to light after centuries of being hidden from the world. 
This process was no easy feat, and the preservation efforts have been painstaking, ensuring that the palace's beauty and history are not lost to time. The Palace of Diocletian is a symbol of resilience, a monument that has stood strong through the ages, braving the elements and the ravages of time. The Palace of Diocletian, a gem of the past, continues to mesmerize us with its grandeur and its tale of endurance standing tall against the test of time.